Welcome to another episode of Morning Meds, FamityFamily.com's devotional spot for males to meditate on Yahweh's word for good success. And good success is not our preference, but it is defined in Joshua 1 verse 8. And we're grateful for your continued attention and application in our march, marathon march through the scriptures. And we are continuing on our today's topic, Remember God's commands, and we are going at this from Deuteronomy 7, verses 1 to 11. Quick recap, yesterday we pointed out that we, that Gamaliel, the ancient Pharisee, and we know Pharisees are law keepers, Mosaic law keepers. They are people that we respect a lot because they held true to a lot of the, the traditions. They were gatekeepers for the biblical scripts the Tanakh and all of the, the religious scripts that we enjoy today. If it wasn't for a lot of these Pharisees, you would not have a lot of the content that we're able to enjoy. Jesus ta taught heavily from the content of the Pharisees and we respect the, them for the traditions. Many people call them Hasidic Jews today, the Orthodox Jew, Jewish um, nations. We respect them and this guy called Camaliel, who was an ancient Pharisee, according to the, the book of Acts 5, 27 to 24, said that the witnesses of truth cannot be stopped. So we want to train our families to have an experience with the truth. And according to the Christian tradition, the truth is Jesus of Nazareth. So we want to encourage our families to remember that witnesses to the truth cannot be stopped. Today we are continuing and we are going to be reading from Deuteronomy 7 verses 1 to 11 on this topic today of, <clears throat> excuse me, on, on the topic of remembering God's commands. Deuteronomy 7, 1 to 11 from the King James Version reads, When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest, go to, whither thou goest to possess it, and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thee. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt excuse me, smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. But thus shall ye deal with them, ye shall destroy their altars, and break down their images, and cut down their groves, and burn their graven images with fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. So that is Deuteronomy 7, verse 1 to 7 on the topic do, uh, do not forget, sorry, remember God's commands. Now here Yahweh has every right to demand our loyalty and our attention. Yahweh guarantees the success of believers and we partner with him through keeping his commandments. Believers are, or Christians as many people say, are a single use or a holy vessel. Verse 8 of Deuteronomy 7 makes us know that God is loyal to us because he loves us based on the promise he made to our ancestors. In the key verse of Deuteronomy 7 verse 11, this says that Yahweh's faithfulness demands and invites our faithfulness. His love demands and beckons our love. And I think, uh, I believe it's Paul that says that um, it was while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. He says that we love him because he loved us first. So Yahweh takes the first step to call us to follow him. 
and repeat what he does. So again, we are encouraging that we coach and mentor our families to understand that what God, what God has done for us is to beckon us, welcome us into a love relationship with him. He knows that many of us will experience the breath that he gives us, this opportunity at life, and will forget him. And that welcomes and that beckons a different kind of eternal existence, an existence that is separate from peace. There is torment forever. There is, no, there is guilt and blame and shame forever. There is no righteousness. There is accusation and, and, and condemnation forever. There is no joy. There is torment and sadness forever because that's all of the opposite of the kingdom of heaven. That's what happens when we forget God's commands. When we remember his commands, and we know the New Testament tells us now that all the commands of the Tanakh are concluded in love. In fact, in Deuteronomy 6 verse 4, it says, You must love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we must love our neighbor as ourselves. These are the fulfillment of remembering God's commands. So we know that God calls us to remember his commands because he freed us. In, I believe, Exodus 20 says, he begins the commandments of God, the, the Mosaic commands, the Decalogue, or the Ten Commands as they are called, with the reminder, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bandage, bondage, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And he gives them a, a list of commands. This is how you live when you are free. This is, this is the price tag of freedom. Freedom, if, you're, if, you, if you want to stay free, if you want to call it that, these, this is the price of your freedom. Your freedom is not free. So at the end of the day, we remember God's command so that we can maintain our freedom. And we understand that we, are, we want to show the world who holy people are. So when we experience the goodness of God, the goodness of God is a testimony to, or a signpost to encourage us to keep his commandments. In verse 8, we are, you know, verse 8 makes us know of Deuteronomy 7. It says, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And we say in verse 11, in verse 11, thou shalt therefore Keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments that I command you this day to do them. We are our freedom, freedom from sin is, yes, we have been healed. Many of us have been brought out of the bondage of drugs, out of the bondage of anger, out of bloodlust, out of the, the bondage of, of, of theft and corruption, scamming, whatever it is. And that is not an easy task. But it said that God has not done this in a quiet little passive way with a mighty hand. In the same way, he freed the, the, the people of, of, of Israel in a mighty, public, visible way in Egypt thousands of years ago. It's the same kind of great triumph we got when we celebrate the freedom from sin. It was a public display in Calvary that happened to Jesus. And it is said that the display was done in Latin. He was written as king of the Jews. It was written in Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. So we understand that all different countries across the world, when they would pass this man on the cross, they would see, oh, the king of the Jews was killed. And it's not private. It wasn't a private thing that was done on Good Friday when Jesus was assassinated. It was a mighty act of power that this king was assassinated in such a brutal and visible way. That, however, is what caused our freedom. It was a mighty hand on the cross that freed us from sin, from being, you know, we believe now that because of Jesus, we can never be held. The devil has no, no strong grounds to accuse us anymore. And we are now free in a mighty way. So it's up to us to keep this commandment, the commandment is to love one another. A new commandment I give to you that you love 
one another.